So, hello, my name is Alexander Spuller. I am from a company called Flinder, and today I want to present your company and then hand over to Anouk Hiltitzing, who is the CEO of an uh, investment uh, platform called Azare, and she's representing our carbon investment project. So what is Flinder doing? At first, uh, we are investing in carbon removal projects and we have the focus on mangrove projects. And on the other side, we are uh, producing blockchain-based technology uh, to help sell the carbon credits or invest in carbon credits that come out of these projects, but not only the present carbon credits, but also the future carbon credits. Before I go a little bit more in detail, I just want to show you this slide, which I think is very important, because Flinder is part of the so-called nature-based solutions. Uh, they comprise uh, restoration projects, but also projects that conserve forests or change land use. And uh, these projects can be very effective. Uh, if you consider that we have another 400 gigatons as a Carbon pro as, a, as a carbon pool that is still existing, so we can emit another 400 gigatons without changing the temperature more than 1.5 degrees. Then you can see that nature-based solutions can contribute up to 10 gigatons a year uh, to this problem. Um, the only problem is that we have to start acting because the higher the temperature gets, the less effective these solutions will be. So if you see the blue line, this is would be the optimum case, it's the two degrees peak temperature. And then you see if we use all the potential of nature-based solutions, uh, the temperature then could be 0 0.3 degrees less, which is quite a lot. But we always have to keep in mind that uh, nature-based solutions should, are always complementing, uh, should always be complementing the economic uh, decarbonization, so it cannot replace it. Uh, what is now done very often, uh, companies just plant trees and continue business as usual, and there is simply not enough land for this. Oops, or is taking the wrong direction. So Flinders' mission is to empower people to make a planetary impact. We support high-quality climate projects with capital and innovation, and our company goal is to mitigate the footprint of Austria of Switzerland, which is around 10 million tons a month, hopefully decreasing over the next years. So Flinder is on one hand side uh, investing and planting uh, mangroves. We have already planted 2,800 hectares in four countries, uh, which amounts to 1 million tons of CO2 that will be sequestered by our carbon plantations over the next 18 years. On, on the other side, we are providing blockchain-based uh, solutions to help sell the carbon and distribute the carbon. So what we will be doing, we will be pooling all these countries to reduce the risk and then we will issue tranches. So there will be a very secure tranche and then there will be more risky tranches uh, with future carbon. Oops, always the wrong direction. So we have a very experienced team and uh, we have been doing this actually since five years. So most of the team knows, this other, knows each other since five years. We have been together in another startup where we could experiment a lot. I was the first investor there. And actually we did the first tokenized carbon credit five years ago. And we also started plant, uh, planting mangroves five years ago. And uh, the idea came up by Alan Lopsch, who is also here today. Thank you very much, Alan, for this. Yeah, and I want to hand over now uh, to Anouk, who will explain, who was actually our first, one of the first investors in our, in our, our product, and uh, she's now helping us with our carbon investment products. Anouk. Yes, I have a microphone. Oh, you have a microphone. <laughs> Does it work, actually? Yeah, it can work. Um, thank you, Alexander, for this introduction. Um, I will start with my personal journey with Flinder. So I've actually invested into Flinder at seed level um, because I like to support business ideas that combine real impact and a good financial return. I think we all do, right? At least everyone who is here today. 
Um, but what makes Flint really special is that they engage from really the carbon project level to the carbon market level. Um, so, uh, sorry, I need the, sorry, thank you. So which one is the right direction? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's right. Okay, yeah. Um, yes, exactly. So um, I'm from Asare Wealth Advisory that I founded together with my partner Natalie that is sitting over here. Um, and it's at Asare, it is all about enabling investors to take agency on their impact. So we give them access to get to know their source of their investment. So um, we share with them relevant information on the local context and the impact created. So it's really all about to get to know your source, to understand the local context and ultimately invest in it. So this is, these are actually pictures from uh, the Flinder Carbon Project in Kenya. And it's not a coincidence that these are all women because most of the tree planters are actually women in the, in the projects. Um, yes. So, um, oh, okay, <laughs> so let's get to know our source a little bit better, Alexander, and let's start a short uh, Q&A okay. with you. Oh, what is happening here? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I've known Alexander a few years ago now, and I think when they started five years ago to plant mangroves to engage with carbon projects, um, it was really not common to understand the value of carbon as a market good. Um, but now I think today this is really a, a no-brainer. So um, also blockchain is really a tech buzzword these days. Um, I mean, you already said a little bit about the background of the team, but maybe you can give a little bit even more information on uh, what makes your team special and why you are actually able to engage from the project the impact level to the market blockchain based uh, exchange? So I, I personally started to invest in fintech about 25 years now ago. My first investment was in Rwanda. It was at this time a star company because it was the first time that you could see interest rates on the internet and you were also able to trade small amounts or trade on the internet currencies. And from this past experience or so, how quick it happens that something is in your head and you talk about that it could happen and a few years later you see how it's getting mainstream and it really works. And with the current team we have been working together uh, for five years. We have been in another startup together where we could experiment a lot and we, are, we came out with a lot of revolutionary projects actually. So we did uh, the first tokenized carbon credit, uh, we did the first security token offering but we also did the first decentralized wallet for the cell phone, crypto wallet for the cell phone. And yeah, two other team members are also here. It's Sergey Ivliev from Perm, from Russia. He is the brain behind all these blockchain projects. He's also has a PhD in economics and is also teaching at the university in Perm. And also Irina Fedorenko, who is a PhD from Oxford, who is our specialist for carbon projects. Yes, thank you for that. I think that explains uh, why you're eligible to engage from the project level to the market level. So um, at Asar, uh, we understand value chain impact as a journey that you co-create impact together with the investors. It's not about having the perfect project from the beginning, but it's actually about improving step by step together with investments. So um, why, Alexander, do you think it is key to engage on the project level, but also on the market level? Yeah. And uh, what are the key ESG impact goals that you aim to achieve mm -hmm. uh, through engaging with the local communities? So for us, it was very important when we started Flinder that we actually invest in change. So we didn't only want to buy technology, but we also wanted to see that something is happening and we change something. So this is why we are always engaging also on the project level and more than half of what we ever raised or invested in the company went into projects that are already uh, growing. So the trees are growing and they are sequestering carbon. So, And uh, with carbon, we have a bit of an easier life compared to other projects because 
there are so many additional values with planting uh, carbon. Uh, it's not only that uh, natural protection against disaster, against storms. It's also very easy if you replant carbon that the marine life, the maritime life is coming again in only a few years and you also have a very high impact on the local population because usually where the carbons are miss where the mangroves are missing it's uh, the region where people are really poor so when we started the mangrove planting in Kenya we found out people didn't even have shoes to go there and plant the mangroves uh, they didn't they didn't have anything so we decided from the beginning that half of the carbon credits so not only the initial, initial investment but also of the carbon credits that come in the next years will be divided with the project. Uh, that means with the people that planted the carbon, the, the, the mangroves, with the people that care for the mangroves, but also it will go to the communities to help change their lifestyle and change uh, the way they are living so that they do not depend anymore on cutting mangroves and doing damage to nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think you also told me that it's not only about engaging on tech because that's kind of trendy. It's really yes. also creating real impact. Right? I think the combination makes mm -hmm. sense, yeah? but we also have to have to make real impact. And then you can think how to distribute with using tech the outcome of the project. And this is in our case, this is carbon credits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so these are actually pictures from Irina um, from a mangrove project in Myanmar. And then maybe, Alexander, you can tell us a bit more about uh, the use of AI in so, your carbon plantations. Yeah, so all our, our carbon projects are verified by international standards like VERA. So in our case, it's only VERA. But we are only working, we are also working on some additional measurements above the standards to make the projects more transparent. And one of these ideas is our AI-based uh, system. So we do to drone flights and then the system can automatically calculate it how much carbon was sequestered between the two drone flights so that we get a very accurate figure about what is happening on ground which is more accurate than if you go and measure it we have done some measurings ourselves in Kenya so you take a sample plot it's five it's a diameter of five meters and then you have to measure every tree and this is a very hard work because it's hard to get there and it's hot and so we think with this methodology, we could dramatically improve the accuracy. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Alexander, which shifts do you foresee in the market landscape also focusing on public markets and uh, compliant markets? So what we see now is that people more and more see the advantages and possibilities of these or these nature-based solutions. And uh, I think there are two very important points. We do not have endless land. So and the land there is, we can, is always competing with other demands. So at the end, we maybe we have 680 million hectares of land we can plant trees on uh, to help sequester carbon. But if you have a look at how much international organizations and countries are promising or companies are promising to plant trees, you see that there's simply enough, not enough land. And therefore, it's very important that decarbonization comes first and only the rest that cannot be done with a shift in how things are produced. Uh, so only this, only then this, 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 um, this investment in nature built solution will make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I'm really sorry for everybody, but uh, it's too late to invest into Flinder, actually. <laughs> the round is closed. But what is the investment opportunity here, Alexander? So we <laughs> still have a very huge pipeline of uh, projects we can invest into. So, we have, over the last years, we have grown our, our plantings and there would be still enough 20, uh, another 20,000 hectares we could plant in Indonesia, in Myanmar, in Kenya, in Senegal, Malaysia, Thailand, and some other countries. And uh, this could sequester up to 5 million tons, which is quite a lot. So, and this is the, the pipeline that is still available. And uh, yeah, we would like to continue our path of expanding our, our plantings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually the funding goal for the carbon project is 60 million. Um, and uh, you can scan here 
this barcode if you're inter interested to learn more about the investment opportunity uh, just now. But of course, you can also talk to the Asare team or the Flinder team. We will be here. Um, actually, Asare is currently hosting an experience pop-up in the Gstaad airport until the end of February. So please uh, pass by to learn more about our purpose-driven investment solutions. So I'd like to close the session here with, if not now, when? I think the, carbon, the price of carbon offsets are increasing as I speak. And uh, if not here, where? So in the end, we are in Gstaad. So yes, thank you all for listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if not here, where? Yeah, that's true. Thank you very much. Do we have some questions for Flinder? But you are here as well, right? Where are you here? In the cinema down there? Or no, in the Stadt private airport, actually. <laughs> yeah, but today, <laughs> today we find here. today here, where? Today in the here. cinema. Are we in the cinema? Yeah, I don't know can, where we are. We are everywhere. You're <laughs> everywhere. Okay, that sounds good to me. Thank you very much, Anouk and you. Alexander. <laughs>